Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, do you know today is the 5 2? So, Fe Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. So, it's a special day, and I hope everyone is enjoying your day today. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, many people who come to us because they have experienced health related set setbacks. So getting yourself tested with BPA, phthalates, and hormone disrupting chemical is a good way to start addressing some of these setbacks. Um, but however, it's not, uh, it's not always like, uh, it doesn't really fix all the underlying drama, uh, trauma that could be causing your health setbacks. And that's why we're like super excited today to have Dr. G joining us to talk about trauma. Um, so Dr. G has an extensive resume with a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Business Economics. Then he became a, a doctor in naturopathic medicine. Uh, Dr. G is also the host of a Heal Thyself podcast, which has actually reached millions of people. Uh, and he creates some really amazing content on his Instagram, including this talk about trauma, how trauma can cause um, future health problems. Uh, that's why we're like super excited today to hear his uh, perspective on this topic. Now let's see. What's up? Hey, nice seeing you. Nice Thank seeing you, you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. We're super excited. I just did an intro, so. Oh, perfect timing. I Listen, I heard my intro a thousand times, so we got to skip the, uh, the boring part for me and get into it. <laughs> yes, okay. Now here we go. Like, but I, I only men I mentioned a little bit about heal thyself, but we're gonna talk about that a little more. But in you know, fun fun to start. Could you tell us a little bit about your educational background? What led you become a naturopath uh, doctor? Uh, what led me to become a naturopathic doctor? It's uh, pretty much me uh, not feeling completely aligned with the uh, medical model. And seeing how the medical model worked with uh, my mom, who was diagnosed with breast cancer, and uh, sort of being put off in many ways about how it was approached when it came to being reductionist, only treating yes. symptoms versus, as you know, you know, the company is based on a more to totality of health, a more holistic approach to health. So uh, when I saw the major gap between what we're doing in medicine versus what medicine can really offer from a holistic right standpoint where we can go through all systems mental emotional physical spiritual then i was much more open to really jumping into something that aligned with my heart it didn't lie where right when i was coming out of undergrad i i remember one of my mentors who helped get me into dental school was like why don't you become a doctor i was like i, I was just close to taking the mcat I actually took my uh, six month, I had a six month study course. We studied with MCAT students, the DAT students, the Dell exam. So I took all of the MCAT pre-courses. And then I go, I don't wanna do it. I go, I don't believe the way that we're treating people. I don't believe the in symptom management. I don't believe in not getting to the root cause. So instead I went to become a dentist, which uh, is in, in many ways uh, lacking the holistic view too. But finding about naturopathic medicine was really something that, that pushed me to do something, something that I'm doing, what I'm doing, right? I'm looking more holistically into treating people. So what are some benefits of seeing a naturopath doctor? Shoot, anyone who's seen a naturopathic doctor knows the benefit. Uh, we uh, approach medicine from, as I mentioned, a holistic standpoint. So what that means is that we are not reductionist in our medicine. We don't see the symptom as the thing to treat. We see it as what we do in the beginning, but it's not the be all end all because masking the symptom or putting it under the rug or putting it in the closet is not a success in the treatment. The okay. success treatment is finding out what the hell is the root cause that caused the body to create the symptom that we're experiencing. Very important aspect to medicine and understanding your body in the whole. The symptom is simply the body's adaptation to the conditions being imbalanced, right? So the body's always looking to balance. So whether it's a disease or a, or, or a skin condition, anything, the body's creating that. The symptom is not the enemy. It's your body talking to you. That's something that we really lose track of. So uh, what we do in medicine is go, okay, how do we work with the body 
instead of seeing the body as faulty, mechanistic, right? And, it, and it's missing those gears. And we go, okay, in our own egoic medical mind, how do we fix that gear, right? With our medication or pushing the physiology to do something rather than going, hold on, what's the body doing? How do we work with the body to mm -hmm. heal? How do, we, how do we make the conditions conducive to healing? That's the power of naturopathic and functional medicine. That's, that's just powerful. So how do you incorporate like a person's trauma in, uh, into how you help with help, help them? Well, that's the holistic standpoint of medicine, right? The, the one thing, and I think that naturopathic and, uh, and functional medicine do it very well, but not that well is we are still not taking into account how big of a role mental and emotional and spiritual health is still. I know many naturopathic doctors who are pre practicing what I call green allopathy, where they're just giving Medicaid or supplements instead of medications, supplements that are doing some, something similar to the, what the medication would, mm -hmm. instead of really going, all right, still, what's the root cause? So uh, when you look at the root cause and what I tell people is that we have a glacier and we see the glacier above water and we see physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. But with the fact, the fact of the matter is behind that, under the glacier, it mm -hmm. under huge quadruple the size of what you're seeing is the mental, emotional, spiritual, and all that trauma, right? All the crap that's being held in the body that's changing the nervous system physiology, that it's pushing inflammation, reducing the immune system, its own health, uh, disrupting the hormones. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing downstream effects. What we got to do with medicine is go back upstream, upstream until we get to the fountainhead and we go, here we go. This is where it's happening. Yeah. And that makes total sense. It's like people mm -hmm. just like sometimes people can't really comprehend trauma, you know, um, in your, you know, could you explain in reality, you know, what is, what is trauma? Trauma is anything that causes a disruption to your homeostatic environment. And it could be physical, right? A trauma is a cut on the leg, a cut on the foot. That is a, a, a trauma or a cut or a disruption to the integrity of the skin. Uh, just like that, we also suffer emotional cuts, emotional wounds that disrupt our integrity of self, right? Uh, and just like a wound in our knee or our foot or our arm, wherever it is, has the intelligence and vitality to heal, so too does our mental emotional disruptions. The thing is, it's a, the nuance is a little different. The mental emotional disruptions require a lot more self-awareness than something that is automatically happening and healing, you see? So trauma can be anything that disrupts your sense of peace, right? When you were a child, before all of the disruptions to your identity were given to you, right? And when you were really, truly, authentically at peace and expressive, right? You were in a homeostatic balance. Then through life, we adapted. And of course, it happens in school. It happens in, in family in family units, wherever it is that those, tra those adaptations that we call traumas, right? They could be big T's, little T's. Mm -hmm. Simply be me wearing a denim jacket with all these rhinestones and a peace sign in the back and someone calling me a name, right? For that and me going, wow, I can't express myself because it's not safe in school because I'll be ridiculed right. and will not belong mm -hmm. to the tribe. Belonging, many times when we're, ch when we're children, trumps the want for being, right? For your yeah. And this is, this is known. And many of my... Many of people who are in this space talk about the same thing. The need to belong is the need for survival, right? And whether it's in a family unit, whether it's in school, it is, it is deep in our genetic code to survive. And the way that we do that is conforming to the tribe. But, um, but what, we, what we have the capacity and ability to do is as we get older, with the awareness, we can heal those inner wounds and then come back to that place of health. Because truly for me, the place of you cannot be healthy Unless you came back to your authenticity, you cannot, you can, you can take all of the tests, take all of the supplements, eat the best diet, do the best workouts, but until you truly heal that cut that has been perpetuated through life, all of your life, you ain't going to be healthy. Right. So that trauma is pretty much not the same for everyone then because they have like different life experiences. We're all carrying stuff, right? It's our responsibility to listen to what we are given in order to heal, right? Again, I'll go back to the analogy of having a cut on your leg. We don't really think about the process, but the body knows how to heal the cut. It has it, fibrin, 
right? It knows how to build up the platelet, the platelets. It knows how to create uh, disinfection with the white blood cells, reducing inflammation, increasing inflammation. It's a, it's a symphony and it's very elegant. But our body, the same knows how to do, how knows how to do that same process. What I talk about is awareness is we have to see, this is where people come in, relativity. Mm -hmm. We have to see what we are being presented with in order to heal. So say, for example, when you were, well, I'll go back to that example of wearing a denim jacket with a peace sign and rhinestones and me not being able to express myself, right? You are always going to be given throughout your life the opportunity to heal that wound by choosing to do the opposite of what you've done to protect yourself all your life, right? It's going to happen many times, right? Whether it's whether it's wearing a denim jacket, speaking in public, speaking up against someone who you picture is using their power against you, whatever it is, we're always going to get those opportunities. If we listen, and this is where the awareness comes in, it comes in, if you listen to that, then you have the opportunity to choose differently. The moment you choose differently, the energy goes into healing that wound. And then you you prove and validate to yourself in that experience, yes, I actually can work actually can speak in public. Holy moly. You ever feel good? You know, when you, you've spoken in public, you're too scared, you accomplish something. It's not just because you did it and you go, yes, I did a goal. It's because internally you're healing that part of you that believed you couldn't do it. That's amazing. Well put. So how early in life does trauma need to happen to manifest as, you know, a disease in the future? It's different for different people, right? Um, and, and what I find and what I've been what I'm finding, what I found is that um, people be different in their contributions of how they express internal environment, right? And so have to wear their heart in their sleeves and they go, I'm angry. This is what I'm angry about. And there you go. And you might even feel that energy come out. Whereas on the contrary, you might feel people who are really holding that in and you know, hold on, there's something going on with that person. I feel it, but they have a it's those type of people, the latter, that I find tend to get sick down mm -hmm. more than the ones who are honoring their emotional state and find the ways to release that internal disposition and energy. Um, with that said, that that's not like a sentence because I'm one who holds in more than expressive, although I'm learning to be authentically expressive to myself. But um, regardless, yeah, I mean, I'm not to say this, that we're far from the science behind this. So I'm not to say this type of person develops this type of disease. We don't know. What I did find and what I have find, found is a lot of the time, and I did a lot of work around cancer, There, this is not said in stone, but I found a commonality. There is a personality that is tied to it. But then there's so many more factors, right? Inflammation, toxins, as, you know, as we know, and then marker. All, all of these things play a role, but it just, we need to pay attention what that, that state imbalance internally does to our physical health right so what does trauma do to the body like on a hormone levels well well we could let's think of a mechanism behind it right so if you have experienced uh and and let, let me go back and say this when you experience a stressful state or a stressful occurrence or an incident we are very well equipped to handle it we have an incredible system that is resilient and can handle it for a day, for a week, for a month, even for a year. But at some point when it becomes chronic, errors on us over time, that system gets worn out too. So when you think of that excessive stress, right? The signal from the brain telling the nervous system that this particular environment is not safe, right? This particular place is reminiscent of something that happened 10 years ago, but my body feels like it just happened yesterday and that's an evolutionary mechanism. So we protect, we remember, right? We got chased by a gazelle 10 years ago. I mean, by a lion, we're going to remember when we go to the Serengeti, oh, wait a minute, uh, this is not safe. Even if you later, right? If you right. So for us, what, what, what happens is that memory is in the body and it's, very, it's, it's, uh, it, it's so palpable sometimes when we're in the environment that's from this. So, what we have to do is understand that when that memory is there, our body is in a state of sympathetic dominance, right? Mm -hmm. That parasympathetic rest and digest, relaxation, being at peace, feeling safe, that goes out the window. Even if we, we don't feel the tidal wave of that and we have a little bit of a drop of sympathetic dominance every single day over and over, that's causing dysregulation on, on our immune system and particularly on our hormones. Why? The hormone system is extremely sensitive to disruptions, including stress. We know it's you 
toxins and illicit toxins, right? BPA will, will knock out your estrogen balance like real quick, your testosterone balance real quick. So too will excessive stress. This is why they say stress kills, because it is true. Mm -hmm. Disrupts your hormones, disrupts your immune system. Your whole system is out of its, its beautiful, elegant symphony. We adapt to it. We feel it. We develop disease based on it. And we have longevity and resilience to it. But the point I'm trying to make is we need to understand that when there's that disruption and we're holding it in in our nervous system, it's feeling unsafe. It's a whole slew of things, depending genetically on the person, but a whole slew of things that happen throughout life, right? Throughout time that manifest one day at 37, 57, 87 as Right. So what are some like physical health effects that could be caused to coming out of the long-term trauma? That, that, that you, what do you mean? Like you're talking about physical, how you can benefit by, by addressing this? Uh, like physical health impacts, like some disease, like besides cancer, what are some symptoms that people can experience, you know, if they don't address it? Yeah. So anything, anything, right? So we have to think about it this way constitutionally and genetically people are very different right um my propensity towards cancer may be more than yours because i had a mother who had breast cancer right uh, whereas you have neurological disease in your right because genetically you just so it depends on many things including our including our genes they don't play a definitive if this gene then this but it does play a role in saying that there's our predisposition epigenetically and epigenetics are meaning the things outside that influence your genetics, including stress, including trauma. Those things are going to, to be the thing to trigger uh, proteins to go stop or go and express themselves uh, through disease. Right. So it can be cancer. Right. It can be it can be uh, neurological disease. It can be hormonal disease. It can be something as as simple as acne. It can be skin disease. Right. It can be. Well, what I always talk about is the development of chronic disease down the line. That's the big thing. Heart disease, mm -hmm. cancer, strokes, high blood pressures, autoimmune diseases that are that they begin to progress to really severe. When you see that, that family of chronic diseases, you have to, you have to take into account all pieces, right? You have to look at the whole pie, including toxins, but you have to have to look at what role the depth of their their nervous system feeling safe or unsafe. What role it plays? You have to, especially in cancer. Towards the end of my career and seeing patients, I asked almost every single patient, "How safe do you feel in your body? Tell me about something where you have unresolved trauma that you're holding in." Mm -hmm. And inevitably, almost every single time, you could hear it in their voice when they talk about something that happened to them when they were younger, or when their disease state started, or when their when their IBS started, when their skin disease started. There was always something right there, and you could hear it in their voice, where the disruption happened, and that's when that's when the nervous system shifted to a new adaptation. So it behooves us in our quest for health, in our journey to be our highest, healthiest selves, to look deeper past the things that you may see on a blog or on on an Instagram post. Look deeper into into what's happening in your nervous system. How do you feel in your body? Because essentially, if you, the healthier you feel in your body, the healthier you feel overall. The healthier you feel overall, the more vibrant your system is and the better you're feeling. Right. So why is it so many people have um, having trouble dealing with their trauma? Society, the way we're taught, right? Especially in America. We are taught to do and do and do. The more that we do, the more athletes we get, right? The more recognition we get, the more we create, build, and achieve, the more that we are, we have reverence for those people. Less so are, is the reverence for the people who teach you how to be, right? Okay. So in this culture, we are built to be sick. In this culture, we are built to, this, to not even look at our traumas, right? Because the stronger you are, the faster you go, the more you accomplish, well, there you go. I want to be like that person that's my role model. But how about the person that sits on their meditation pillow that I'm on every morning and just stops and eat? How about the person who journals every morning and looks at the paper and go, holy shit, I can't believe I've been carrying these for the past 15, 20 years. And it's right here on paper. When we celebrate being more, that's when we start shifting the perspective of what medicine is to a deeper 
mental, emotional, spiritual self. Remember the glacier. Mental, yeah. emotional, above the water is the physical, right? But we are so obsessed with treating the physical, both yeah. naturally, functionally, and certainly conventionally, that we are hardly ever looking at what's underwater, right? And what's underwater always, remember, is in the body, not here. You cannot release those latent emotions that you're holding in for so many years through logic, through talking. Mm -hmm. It has to come in a place of being. It has to come in a place where you are surrendering. You are one with your body and your body's going, oh my God, here it comes. It's coming out. That's from 1998. I'm going to scream. I'm going to shake. That's from 1995. Oh, here's these tears from 1997. That's the way that you do the deepest healing. I don't care what disease it is. The body doesn't care the name of the disease. It only cares that it's not in its state of balance. Right. So you mentioned like a few really important tips um, to, for people to deal with the past trauma. One is, you know, awareness. So what are some other tips that someone can take to address, start addressing their traumatic past? Yeah, I, I just did a, a, a little Instagram uh, live the other day. And the reason why I spoke about this is because I wanted people to learn the importance of getting into their body. The way that you truly get into this deepest place of release, that which you've been holding in for many years. You know, we're, I'm assuming we're all adults here since our childhood. You have to get into the body. There's no other way than to get into the body. We, are, we try to override thinking that we know better than our body, but we in this lifetime, nor any scientist that will ever walk the earth will ever be as sophisticated and intelligent as the body. So when we surrender to the body's intelligence and come into a state of being, when we practice what it means to shut this off and come into our body, when we become present with anything we're doing, including like drinking some water, literally listening to all of the sounds, feeling the turn, drinking the water, tasting it, when we become present, we come into the body, and that's when we tap into that intelligence. The more we do that, the more we have the intention of moving the stuff that we're holding in. And you guys know, if you feel it here, or if you feel it here, or you got something that you know you're just holding in, that that can come out at any given time the more you just come to a place where your body is, you're, you're surrendering to the body and you're letting it in its own intelligence start that release. We override it thinking that, oh no, it's not safe. I can't yell in this society. I certainly as a man can't cry in this society. <laughs> this is the stories that we taught ourselves yeah. healing. When we let go of those stories, feel safe in our environment where we are, allow the body to release that which it has been trying to do since the 90s, since the 80s, well then that's when the most powerful, powerful team. I've, I've seen miracles happen. Miracles, diseases that can't be overturned happen mm -hmm. when these people are releasing the stuff that they need to so bad. Yeah, it makes total sense. So do you still see patients? Like, you know, what does, if people wants to see you, like what's the session with you look like? It's a good question. I stopped seeing patients three years ago uh, in order to give my all, all of my energy in hitting people. Lives through the podcast, Heal Myself, which is really exploding and grown. Um, but uh, I guess I haven't announced it yet. I'm, I'm actually going to Portugal for a few weeks uh, to learn. So I'm going through a seventh month process to learn how to facilitate this healing, right? I've had the healing myself, and it, it's the most incredible thing I've ever experienced in my life to let the body, and it's a, it's a damn exorcism if you see it, but it's the body doing what it does best. So I'm, I'm gonna learn how to facilitate that for people. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna be taking clients all the time, but I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I will want to help people in these moments in their deepest forms of healing. So whenever that comes, I have a tool to do it, and that's what I'm gonna be doing. Wow, that, that is so cool. You also co-founded the Swell Score. You know, tell us about that too. Man, the Swell Score is on fire. I'm going to tell you that. We have been uh, getting so many members and I'm very proud of it. Why? Because it's the platform. It's a platform where it takes the guessing out of every, I mean, you know, the DMs I was getting before it was open, Dr. G, where do I get the best magnesium? Where do I get the best uh, heart, heart formula? Where do I get the best adrenal formula? How about the best mushrooms? Right. So, is we put together a group of scientists, doctors, and nutritionists. We all go through anything on the store. We all do a round table. Yes, no, yes, no. Here's why, why. Sometimes you argue, sometimes we say, okay, good. But we've expanded it past supplements. Remember, because it's not just supplements, it's the environment. Mm -hmm. You and I are passionate about the environment. So now we're adding in beds, we're adding in bedding, we're adding in air purifiers, right? We're adding all of the things in the home too. 
And now we're expanding to food. So now we're putting in protein powders, but ones that are devoid of heavy metals, which I know that, that is really important to you in, in the testing, devoid of all those okay. chemicals, EPAs. So we wanted a platform where everyone can have the freedom to go, I don't have to research anymore. Right. I to trust the brand that did the work for me. So really proud. It's growing. It's blowing up. If, if anyone here never signed up for this wall school, go check it out and sign up. I mean, it's the best you're going to get. Amazon, let me tell you something about Amazon. $6 billion industry of counterfeit supplements out there. So if you're going on Amazon, one, you cannot guarantee it is real. And two, if it is real, you cannot guarantee that it's stored properly. Guy think about storage. Right. That are really sensitive. Eat, really sensitive to uh, sun, right? If they're not stored packaging, you're really sensitive to uh, humidity. And you might be getting supplements that are half potency just by it being correctly so we take care of all that no this is like so convenient uh for everyone and also taking the guess out uh, guesswork out of the way so this is awesome now i'm also a huge fan of here heal thyself podcast tell us more about it it's the best podcast i've ever heard it is uh it, it is my in many ways my life's work part of it and uh it's it simply for those of you who haven't listened it's a podcast which has over three and a half million downloads in three years. So we got about a million. It had a massive growth from year two to three, which was last year, um, almost almost doubled in audience. Um, it's everything. It's it's be anything, pretty much at this point, we've talked about everything from heartburn to childhood abuse, to authenticity, to which is the best potato chips at Whole Foods, you know? It, it, what I, I have so many wants and ideas to communicate to people. Uh, I'm passionate about everything. So uh, I want to share that passion about everything on every show. So um, now we're at about 160 something shows, I believe. And um, at this point, we, like I said, we've covered so much, but I would urge you all to check it out because we have segments where I'm just talking about deep stuff from the heart. I'm, tell, I'm talking about studies that back it up. And then I'm doing product reviews. Sometimes I'm going over the best protein powders, matchas, coffees, uh, uh, collagen powders out there. And then the guests are top notch. The guests are the top, they're the, the best of the best in their space. Spiritual, mental, emotional. We have therapists, psychiatrists. We have uh, physical health, just like uh, muscle doctors, stem cell doctors, gut doctors, uh, practitioners across the board, thought leaders. That's why I said it's the best show that I, I've ever heard and is my damn show. Awesome. This is so good. And thank you so much for coming on today. Tell us all of these things. Um, so everyone be sure to follow Dr. G on Instagram. Um, and it's actually Dr. Uh, spelled out dot Gonzalez. So, and also make sure you listen to heal thyself podcast. And then you can also learn more about Dr. G on, um, uh, at his website, drgonzalez.com. And, uh, or you can click in our LinkedIn bio or tap the post promoting this Instagram live to get more information. So Man. thank you so much. I love you and sharing all the love. And before, and before, uh, we get out, I want to thank you for putting out million marker. Uh, you know, I've been a fan since day one, you know, how passionate I am about toxins and to think that there is a direct to consumer toxin test out there for the people is the most empowering thing because the toxin test that I use, I need to write a script and there's a million people I want to send toxin tests to. So I'm not going to write a million scripts, right? But the, the, what you're doing in the space of toxins and healing toxins and education is second to none. So I'll give you all the love too. Thank you so much. And we're looking forward to the future opportunity so we can work together. You already know I'm signing up. Right. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining. Bye.